Okay, I'm going to be doing commentary on this, uh, uh, Dylan Burns panel. Uh, I'm obviously watching Destiny's version, but it's fine. I don't want to give Dylan Burns the views, because obviously I have a pretty big issue with him. Um, uh, yeah, I'm going to be going over, commenting over this panel. And there are a couple things that I'm going to be looking for. Like, um, I'm looking for the quality of the arguments, the quality of the counter-arguments. What is the level of understanding relative to the quality of those arguments? Um, is there bridges being made? Is there understanding between both sides? Um, and then stuff like, uh, for my side, are the arguments that are being made, do I agree with them? And for uh, my opponent's side, can I make good arguments to my opponent's side? Or good counter-arguments, I'm sorry. I'm also looking at, like, what can be learned from this? What can, uh, can be taken into future debates to further understanding? And, uh, yeah. So let's start this. At the end of every round, a panel of three judges, Katarana, uh, Danabo, and a uh, surprise uh, guest judge, Vadim Newquest, host of Creationist Cat, will be, hosting, will be judging your performance. If you do poorly or do not talk enough, you'll be eliminated. If you do good enough, you'll stay in. I want no complaints. The odds of you winning the championship enter the... Do that! Yeah, I'm right at WH Omega Line now. Now. Oh, Besides is that the that, Xander? The Do rules, I hate no him? Slurs, no, that's TOS, Xavier. No, and no attacks based on immutable characteristics. That's what if they're immutably as as stupid? <laughs> Welcome to the championship. Topic is how is Biden doing as president? How is he doing as president? Is he doing a decent job? Is he doing a bad job? Uh, I will introduce you all because we don't have time for intros. The people on your screen right now is American Nacho on the top left. Next to him is Counterpoints. Next to them is Demon Mama. Next to them is Destiny. Uh, I, of course, am Dylan Burns TV, your luxurious host. Next to me is Sprouticus. Then it is Trihex, then Xander Hall, then Loner Box. You can find all the information in the description of the YouTube video that will be produced and okay. maybe in. Yeah. All right, guys, what do you want to start with? Do you want to start with his response to COVID, his infrastructure plan, uh, immigration? Where do we want to start? Are you saying it's with, positive or negative? The fact, I want to start with the fact that the first problem Biden encountered, he directly handed it off to his vice president. True. Like the first actual problem he went into office and encountered, it was, okay, this is Kamala Harris's problem. What problem mine. was that? What problem was that? The, immigration. The immigration and the border wall. Yeah, she went so over to, what was it? Was it, I think it was Guatemala, I think it was. Okay, so we're not talking about Guatemala. We're talking specifically when we talk about the border wall. We're talking about Mexico. It's telling that you have literally no idea what we're talking about. It's telling, because you obviously haven't heard these arguments. Where she did like a, a statement about it, where she talked it's about just, how they're going to be giving, I think it was two or three trillion dollars in aid. Yes, let's just print money. That'll definitely not turn out badly. Um, I forget what country it is. It's in South America and it's got, like we have a lot of immigrants. Not South America, North America. We're talking Mexico, Honduras. These are the problem children that come to their not Guatemala but okay or due to the I mean, if you want to give aid that's fine I just don't like the trillions of dollars in spending the crime and the corruption of the government she said she's going to uh, the Biden administration so there's government corruption so we're going to give that government more money is going to be uh, funneling a ton of money over there to help root out the corruption and and stem the crime it didn't even want her there though first off that country that country didn't even want her there second off she still hasn't been to the border the closest she got was 30 miles away in san antonio that is the yeah, closest. i don't know why this doesn't want mean wait wait one at a time wait one at a time the first person i heard was talk was destiny so i'm gonna give it to him yeah so number one delegating things to your vp is not a bad thing i don't know why we're... okay so this conversation that the conservatives are trying to have are two-pronged we haven't heard the second part, um, but like it's two pronged. It's not just one thing. Yes, delegating um, stuff to your VP isn't terrible, but when you, given the idea that you've abnegated responsibility, and then you just pass it off to someone else, it it kind of gives a bad vibe. We'll go over that. Hang on. Make that sound like a bad thing. Um, and number two, who the fuck cares if you actually go to the border wall or not? I mean, I guess we can talk. Oh yeah, they already did say it. So like. Biden didn't even go to the border wall. He doesn't seem like he's willing to uh, do anything there, like actually take care of the problems there. And so when he hands it off to Kamala Harris, it gives the impression that he just doesn't care about it, and it's just kind of like hand-waving it away, like, fuck it, you deal with it. Like, 
Talk about like the app. That it's a two-pronged thing. No one of those things is necessarily like bad, but both of them are really. Actually, I would say not going to the border wall. Probably pretty bad. You want to know what the fuck's going down there. Optics of how that looks, but I think it's probably more relevant to talk about border wall policy, whether or not you have a photo op of the border wall. Okay, so it's not a photo op. That's a really dumb uh, view of how this is. It's not a photo op. You're, it's like going down to fucking see Katrina or the damages of a hurricane. You're looking at the problems that are there and like assessing what policy needs to be done by actually having a first-hand experience look at the uh, issues at the border wall. So that's really dumb. Obviously, doesn't doesn't understand this. It's not just a photo op, though. Is, is, though, is it? It's it's more than a photo op. You're going down the border to see what's on the ground with your own, with your own eyes, because that's really how you get a perspective of what's going on. Is when you look at it through your own eyes. You can say no, Destiny, all you want, but this is how presidents have done it for decades. Okay, when something goes down, they go there. Um, and Biden de Biden decided that it was Kamala Harris's problem, and Kamala Harris didn't even go there. The entire Biden presidency. It's since been a joke. Um, Biden, Biden, yeah, so all wait, Biden did about, a, all di all by di nice interruption. And about COVID was wait, wait, he adopted hopping, Trump's hopping, plan with a to, few minor don't, changes. Don't hop to, don't, don't hop to, don't hop to, don't hop to. I'm just, just saying that it's a bit of a joke. Like, okay, hold on. This is, this is really silly. Fucking, it is absolutely normal for, for presidents to delegate tasks to their vice president. Oh, and Demon Mama doesn't get it either. Not that I expect her to, but oh my God, these people don't get it. It's not even that. It's. The first thing, which is really bad, and then the second thing makes it look even worse. This is a, a, a like, completely invented grievance. If we're invented grievance, okay. Talk about things that, like, Biden has and hasn't done. I have a couple things I could bring up. One of the things, a bit of a, a, bit of a topic that's in my wheelhouse that Biden has done really well, which is a civil and social victory, is that uh, he has now uh, instated a federal policy by which trans people can have, uh, without, the, without needing a a complex and incredibly lengthy process actually change their uh, gender marker and name on their passport. Okay. I could not possibly think of a less important issue than trans names on passports, especially at this time. Trying to get vaccine rollout, trying to do all that shit. That is like one of the least important issues that you could possibly like focus on is what Biden did well and it's obviously telling that either he hasn't done well in any other vector or Demon Mom is just incredibly self-centered. Probably both. Um, again, without a whole pile of paperwork that's necessary. Uh yeah. <laughs> the paperwork is because our government's too bloated and big. You think uh, less bureaucracy would be good? You're almost you're almost there, Demon Mama. Um, that's really, really awesome. In fact, you're almost a conservative. They're also going to be adding in an option for a um, non-binary gender selection on passports, which is huge and not give them a fucking award. Something that's likely to be undone. One of the things that I most praised about Obama was the fact that Obama actually put into place a policy by which you could get your uh, your plastic. Um, I support that very much. The other, the only problem with Obama's version was that it was immediately undone by Trump. Do that is a civil rights victory. Civil rights victory. Meanwhile, we have like black people in like rundown cities like Detroit with fucking terrible educational opportunities, and like, <laughs> okay, you know what's a civil rights victory? School choice. With regard to COVID, I mean, look. Uh, anything is better than what Trump did. Trump literally went around saying that COVID wasn't a problem. Right now, uh, I'm So here's the problem I have with that. He did so, I think, for around for the first six months. I'd say first six months of the year, he kind of was laissez-faire about it. F speaking from my opinion, I think in early February, I was like, okay, there's no way this leaves Asia. Like, or like, even if it does, maybe like one or two people get it. Because we've all seen the Ebola, H1N1, fucking swine flu, all that shit. No one knew that this was going to be a, as huge a thing. Like, it was huge in China, but we had no idea how much it would spread. So, like, it's kind of like, there's a one episode of Scrubs where it's like, uh, do you wait and see or do you act now? So a lot of, like, Democrat-run cities and states did act now, like, almost immediately. And we had a, a lot of really terrible policies uh, thanks to that. We had, like, a putting uh, COVID patients in nursing homes. And we had, like, super strict lockdowns and shit that ended up spreading COVID more. Like, 
we had a lot of really terrible policies because we rushed to judgment. A lot, like a lot of liberal states rushed to judgment on things. Like it wasn't supposed. It was supposed to be flatten the curve, not kill the virus and fucking lock everything down. A lot of Democrats did act immediately, and they kind of fucked up on that. We saw a huge first wave in a lot of big cities. Probably not helped by the fact that uh, people are so super close together in big cities. Like the like Texas didn't really get like its first wave until the riots where people were rioting from out of state. It's kind of like how when Europeans came over to like Indian lands, like a lot of diseases they had grown immunity to were really like um impacting those people. It's like it's like that kind of same thing where like you probably got COVID, you lived through it, and now when you're rioting in Texas from out of state, you spread it to them and then that's when they start having problems. Yeah, um I don't think anyone thought this was going to be a, a huge thing until it was. Now, maybe we can say he should have acted sooner. Okay, maybe. But, like, I think letting the states handle it is probably a good policy for... Pro it might not have been a good policy for Canada or, like, Britain or whatever, any other country. But for a country as big and divided as America is, I think it was a good policy, at least for now. Like, obviously Trump did ama amazing things like Project Warp Speed and stuff like that. But, yeah, I'm going to stop rambling. I'm just checking, just out of curiosity on Bing here, fatal cases of, of COVID in America is a 612,000. So, you know, uh, I'm just going to say, damn, uh, uh, Biden's done a pretty good job. Wait, I, I remember re uh, reacting to that because I thought it was stupid, but I can't remember why I'll remind a bit. Out of curiosity on Bing here, fatal cases of, look, uh, anything is better than what Trump did. Trump literally went around saying that COVID wasn't a problem. Right now, uh, I'm just checking, just out of curiosity on Bing here, fatal cases of, of COVID in America is a 612,000. So, you know, uh, I'm just going to say, damn. Okay. Oh, oh, right. The framing of this is so dishonest. So, like, oh, my God. It's like what the fucking surf did with the residential schools thing. Like, like trying to conflate the ones in, like, 1907 to 1997. Like, Oh my god, like, she's saying, like, the framing of this is that when Trump was just ignoring it and letting it, like, and waiting and seeing, 612,000 people were dying. This is probably the number of right now in fucking July 17th, 2021. Like, by that time, we've gotten the vaccine, the Trump vaccine, and Trump started doing stuff like the CARES Act and shit like that. We've also passed multiple, like, um, uh, what the COVID relief bills, even before Biden, they were unanimously supported. So, like, <laughs> okay, her framing is so dishonest. Uh, uh, Biden's done a pretty good job getting the vaccination out to people. We've Dude, okay, this is a stupid take as well. Like, I'm pretty sure it was Trump's vaccine plan that got it out. Because, like, rollout kind of takes a little while. They announced it um, after the election. Suspicious a little bit, but, uh, I mean, like, they announced it after the election, and then it probably takes a little while for that rollout to go through. But yeah, when we start seeing people getting vaccinated around the time that Joe Biden gets in office, that's not that's not his doing. Like, someone had... What was that quote from Obama, that kind of, like, communist dog whistle thing? Like, you didn't own that business. Obviously, the implication is that it should be expropriated. But, like, you didn't own that vaccine rollout plan. That was Trump's. You just uh, showed up in time to get the credit for it. We've had a significant drop in deaths from COVID. Nearly, after nearly half of all, nearly half of all uh, adult Americans are fully vaccinated. And it's been pretty significant. Thanks to the Trump vaccine. Significant. Um, it was on his first day in office. His in his first, in his first, like you have, you have to see how the census is like, because it's under Biden, people are getting vaccinated. That's somehow his accomplishment. Now, you could potentially point to things he did to inc like further or increase the rollout that's fine and then we could argue about that but right now he's just saying because it happened during the beginning of the biden presidency he takes credit for it that's stupid it's time like the rollout was already going we already were seeing mass uh, decrease in deaths thanks to the vaccine like before like as biden was coming into office like come on sure days in office biden uh enacting i believe it was executive order to mandate mask wearing on federal property and mandate but I thought the vaccine was perfect. It prevented spread. Why would you need a mask? Dude, the fucking... Oh, the fucking, uh... Message on COVID shit is so fucking bad from the left. Oh my god. Like... Take the vaccine. It's gonna protect you from COVID. But also you need to wear a mask indoors. Also you need, like, 3,000 fucking boosters. 
Like, c come on, you're not doing anything to uh, encourage people to get the fucking vaccine. Like, the kind of idea is once we have the fucking vaccine, we can go back to normal. And now people are like, oh, fuck, I got the vaccine. Now I still have to wear a fucking mask. I mean, obviously I'm glad that I'm more protected against COVID, but I kind of want to get this thing so we could fucking end this thing. Like, so like, what's the fucking point? What's the point of getting the booster, even the double dose order? Like, th th I can understand that belief because the the terrible messaging. Not to mention that anti-vax shit from Kamala Harris. Like, oh, if it came out under Trump, I wouldn't take it. Like, oh, come on, really? <laughs> no wonder our vaccination rates are so shit. The Democratic messaging on this has been dog shit. And then they tried to mandate it. Whew. Not a good look. Uh, quor uh, quarantines for international travel. Uh, uh, travel. Um, two trillion in spending on... Um, on <laughs> More trillions. Can we at least try to make that a B or an M? On COVID relief? Pretty damn significant. Way better than Trump. Trump's... Uh Way better than... We got two... Two or three COVID relief bills unanimously passed. Okay, buddy. Administration didn't have any plans whatsoever for... Okay, so this is not true. I know I have a couple of... Uh, what was this one? I was looking at this one. I was doing a little bit of research mid-video, and then my battery died, and now I have to reload the fucking thing. Okay. Oh, yes, this is, uh, this is a little bit later. Operation Warp Speed. Here we go. This is the one. Okay, so yeah, this is like... This was Trump's plan for, like, uh... The vaccine. This was Operation Warp Speed. He was talking this up in a bunch of his rallies. Like, how can you say he has no plan? Like, it's, it's obviously such a fucking lie. I'm not gonna try to read it out loud, because... These segments are always kind of cringe where I'm just like, pause, read, pause, read. You can kind of, uh... I'll link it in the description. Yeah, from the CARES Act, Currents Aid Relief, and uh, Economic Security. Operation Fort Speed was formed to encourage private and public partnerships to enable faster approval of the vaccine during the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. Faster than like you did Star Trek. Okay, yeah. Cool as shit. This was Trump's plan. And he got us the fucking vaccine. Like, you can't lie about this shit. He got us the fucking vaccine. Now, I haven't seen anything that shows that uh, that Biden is really responsible for the rollout. If you could, you know, show some evidence for that, that'd be neat. But to say Trump had no plan, it's just a lie. Vaccine rollout. They found that during the um, the transition. Biden's plan, far more constructive, an actual How? plan for starters that exists. How? <laughs> also, I, it makes me chuckle when people repeat obvious lies. Like, when they lie... I look it up, realize they're lying, and then they lie again. It's like, <laughs> it makes me chuckle. Um, and has had a much larger effect. We're actually starting to see things go back to normal, which of, would not have Laughs at Omicron. Uh, Omicron, sorry. Which seems like it's, seems like it's less deadly, which is good. I feel like it's going to mutate um, into a more spread, but less dead. It kind of reminds me, like, because I think that's what viruses do. They want to get the most hosts possible. They don't want to kill their hosts. This whole COVID-19 stuff with Omicron and it mutating kind of reminds me of an episode of Psych. The main dude thinks that a bookie killed someone, and his response is like, um, dead men don't pay back debts, injured men do. It's, it's kind of like that, like, like, it's evolving to be less deadly, but spread more often, so it gets to more hosts. I don't know. I feel like eventually we're just gonna, it's gonna be essentially be like a flu or another thing we'll have to deal with. But it'll be less, um, it'll be less of a problem over time. And again, our, our leaders are bound and determined to make sure that we follow their direct orders with the mandates and the mask shit. Like, I don't know. Kind of feels like you're profiting off of uh, the pandemic, especially when one of your people even said, never let a good crisis go to waste. I don't know. It's a feeling I get. I thought I was on a panel. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, counterpoints. I not said anything yet. He was the first to grab it. Counter. Sure, sure, sure. I thought I was on a panel with a bunch of leftists. Why are we blowing a neoliberal fascist? What are we doing here? Like, is this just... <laughs> so that's kind of a shit story comment from Counterpoints, but it's kind of funny. Could be a circle oh, jerk about how fucking... I'm sorry, have you ever seen me call Biden a neoliberal fascist? Because I don't... Said the bread tuber. I don't know if you're aware of my content, but I spent basically... You literally put bread tuber in your hashtags, dude. Okay.
the last uh, two years, almost three years that I've been doing this, uh, shilling for Biden over Trump. I love how in his community, it's like mask off, eat the rich, red tuber, but like on this panel, a whole bunch of fucking uh, new libs, he's like, oh, well, you know, I've, I've, I've defended Biden, you know. Um, okay, there's no doubt in my mind whatsoever at any point that I've been doing this that uh, uh, Biden but, was a better but pick. I, than but Trump. I thought this was all tactical. I, th I thought it was all tactical because you know Trump was like the actual fascist, and you know the the Biden and the Democrats are just this like ineffectual fucking stopgap for fucking you know like. No. Do you want me to complain about Democrats? <laughs> I think cat. Uh, I think. Oh my God! What's that fucking awful channel? Oh my God! I can't remember. Um. Second thought. Oh my God. Second Thought has said that before in one of his talk, like awful videos. Congrats, well, if you want me to complain me. about Democrats, we can talk about the infrastructure bill and those that won't vote on it um, or that won't support it. But I'm not going to take away uh, achievements that Biden has made because I have criticisms of him. That's not you do that for Trump, though. How you you're, taking, honestly yeah, you're, take, you're taking them away from Trump. You're taking them away it's, from Trump because the, like, like, the large majority of what Biden has done so anymore, far what, what, for wait, wait, COVID. Wait, 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 the large majority of what Biden has done so far for COVID was following Trump's guide was following Trump's guidelines and how. So let's take a look at uh, this. The Trump administration urges states to open COVID nineteen vaccines to everyone over sixty five. Okay, this is kind of Trump's plan. Making several big changes to its COVID nineteen vaccine distribution strategy. We bid to jumpstart the rollout and get more Americans vaccinated quickly. The first change is to call on all states to expand immediately the pool of people eligible to receive vaccines to those 65 and older, and those with un well, underlying health con uh, conditions that make them more susceptible to COVID-19. We can go through this. They should open vaccinations to all their most vulnerable people. This is the most effective way to save lives now. Uh, by oh, here we go. Biden's plan for COVID-19. Biden is choice for VP Kamala Harris. I spoke regularly both before and that that need implement a more robust plan than the last administration did to tackle the worsening coronavirus pandemic. The primary focus will be on expanding access and trust to the. <laughs> he's 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 he's. Oh my God! He's fucking. I I don't know who it was that said that. But Sprout, I guess he's fucking right. The latter, which they hope to encourage by receiving their first vaccine on oh oh on national TV. So if you need to vaccine to work on CNN in September, hard to never do it. Okay, but that's not a week to go before taking office. Surely COVID. Okay. So yeah, then it goes into it. But his his vaccine his fucking vaccine rollout plan is like the primary focus will be on expanding access and that's exa oh, oh fuck off seriously oh, I I hate that but okay so we talked about the Biden's plan increase in, increase access to the COVID nineteen what was Trump's plan change vaccine distribution strategy officials. The first change to call on states to expand immediately the pool of people eligible to receive vaccines to those 65 and older and those with underlying health conditions that make them more susceptible to COVID-19. These are like almost word for word the same. In fact, Trump's plan is almost more like verbose. Biden's like increased access. That's the same fucking plan. <laughs> Dude. How he was going to act in the future. He made very Nobody little to no changes. That. He made Nobody he made very that. little he made very little And Demon Mom was trying to cut in. One thing about Demon Mama that you'll notice, maybe not in this debate panel, but if you see her in debates, she loves to interrupt people, but hates when she gets interrupted. It's a like it happens a lot that she does that. Changes to the actual plan and Biden just carried out what Trump was going to do. That's true. All Biden did. There was no plan. The Biden Biden. That's <laughs> So wrong. Oh, Xander, you're fucking up. I didn't roll up once in vain. Oh, God. Pause. Like D-Mom was the first to grab it. D-Mom is the one who jumping into this conversation. I haven't heard Lodabark say anything yet. Appreciate that. So there's a couple of things I could say here. First of all, if we want to go into critiques of, of Biden, I do have a very solid critique that I would like to make of Biden. But I think that it's fair to give credit where credit is due. Even me. And Not for Trump, though. You and fucking Zan are saying that he had no plan. That's another rhyme. A, a extreme lefty. I think it's very good. We are in a time of extreme crisis and that the good- Extreme <laughs> crisis. Okay. Things that are done- Like, shit's bad, especially with the Biden inflation. But I think we're better than we were- even, I think, at the time of this panel, we were better than we were a year ago. Should be praised. I think that the, uh, the goal 
that he has of pushing through the human infrastructure plan is absolutely necessary for um, for our economy. Uh, keep in mind, a pandemic is a is a, a disaster that affects individual people. It, it affects individual people. Yet Democrats want to institute a large uh, sweeping de like one size fits all policy for multiple different states, which with multiple different population sizes. Okay. They get sick and that damages the economy. We need stuff like that. But if you want to know what my critique of Biden is, well, my critique is that he He's not extreme enough. doesn't have an answer that's good enough for climate change. <laughs> oh, God. I, I need to do, like, a, a manifesto on, like, fucking climate alarmism. I'll call it a moratorium for climate alarmism. Holy fuck. Like, I have such a fucking kill shot for this. And I'm so tired of people, like, freaking out over it. But I'll, I'll save that for another time. Climate change is a global threat. I, I, I really don't think climate change is a global threat. It might cause some, like, negative impacts here or there. But I really do not think it's, like, a 12 years of catastrophe thing. I've been doing so much research on climate change recently, and it is horrifying. If you even... Okay, you're looking at, like, really fucking weird, like, bad predictions, like... It'll never snow in London. That happened here. I have no doubt, given our preparedness for and I who are straight, the the unwillingemic, and we're supposed to prediction that we've had so. If you want my criticism of it, that's we have a drought currently that's begun to have uh, seasons. We're going to be having flooding if we get heavy rains. This is a super super serious issue. Hard enough. They need to. She also likes to talk a lot. Play dirty. This is a, a, a matter of, of being willing to play hardball. With so I have a quick question. Wait, can, can I, can yeah, I go yeah, first? I, sorry, oh, yeah. Xander, can I go there? Because I was yeah, it was Lona, Lona was next, yeah. and then we'll throw it to counter. Just want to be okay. yeah. clear. Cool, cool, cool. Just so, to put the, wait, just to put the COVID. After me. Wait, is Lonerbox after me, or is it is it Lonerbox? I, I'm, then I'm, Lonerbox, then counterpoints? I, I don't know. That was you know, act like a man okay, and get okay. it yourself. Okay, okay. Really quickly. So Demon Mama, I understand that. However, it seems like- Wait, did you not hear me? Xander, yeah. I said it would be loner. Okay, let loner do it, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just to put the COVID relief bill into context, that was, with accounting for time, that was the biggest fiscal stimulus in American peacetime. So uh, I think I heard someone in the background saying that it was more private companies that, no. Um, as for Connor, uh, yeah, leftists having a, a favorable view of Biden. Okay, I'm, I'm a leftist, I hate Biden. I wouldn't trust him to sit the right way on a toilet seat. But True. looking at what he's done so far, politicians are not leaders. A politician's job is to re Wait, what? <laughs> I want to assume that he misspoke here. Politicians are not leaders? What do you mean? They're supposed to be leaders of our country. What do you mean? Like, I think he misspoke there, but like, because like, a lot of the criticism of Trump is he's not presidential enough. He's not like, his behavior is not worthy enough to be a leader of our country. That was a lot of a big, like, very shallow criticisms about Trump. I don't know. Read the room, power relations, public opinion, etc., and make a decision. As far as that goes, Biden has so far broken with a very long lasting economic orthodoxy in America that was the legacy of Obama, of Clinton, Bush, Trump. The idea that uh, by basically. I don't think all of these are the same. I don't like conflating the idea that Obama, Bush, like, uh, and Trump are like all the same that's really silly trump is a populist and they're both statist neoliberals like i'm sorry i i was thinking of obama and clinton did he say clinton i don't know maybe he did i was thinking hillary clinton i don't know about bush i don't know what the fuck bush is neocon probably i don't know it's going to do something based no i'm just kidding i don't know <laughs> i don't have much opinion on bush the idea that state intervention in the economy in a time of pretty desperate social need actually works. <laughs> that sounds like a cell phone. Like, <laughs> you need a time of desperate social need for, like, economic stimulus to work? Oh, God. It's like all the communists who say, like, um, we can implement worker co-ops and we can't work, uh, we can't implement worker co-ops in a capitalist framework because they'll all fail. We need a communist revolution. It's like, oh, you need a communist revolution for your work style to work? Seems like, seems like it's pretty bad. Like, seems like it's pretty bad, then, dude. Yeah, I'm from Europe. <laughs> you need, you need a economic crisis for stimulus to work. Europe, we do it all the time. You should try it. <laughs> you have economic crises all the time in Europe. 
Uh, when it comes to, but of course there's plenty of room for criticism, not just from a leftist perspective, we'll complain about everything. The climate plan and the jobs bill do have pl plenty of flaws. They don't really live up even in some ways to the standards of the people who promoted it. So it's not very cohesive. They're also super contradictory. You want to be super hard on green energy, but also get more jobs. <laughs> if the infrastructure plan doesn't really. Anyone convincing themselves that like hardcore green energy shit and climate shit equals more jobs, you're deluding yourself. Uh, melt that well with a climate plan the way that their uh, high-speed rail project is very... <laughs> I don't think they would. ...limited compared to how many roads they want to build. Well, building roads means you get more cars and that doesn't really gel very well with a climate plan, but... So we can talk about that, but yeah, I mean, you know, sometimes liberals do things right. It's, it's okay. To... Okay, sometimes. Okay, so so I have a quick question for the leftists. Yeah, so once in a blue moon, liberals are right. <laughs> okay. Whatever that I think would be uh, helpful to ask is basically like oftentimes we bitch about how the right wing is like fiscally conservative when it's inconvenient to do so. Um, and as far as I understand, inflation is basically like the printing of money in relation to economic activity. Um, and as much as we want to pretend that we can just do what we've done with the stimulus, which I think was good, by the way, and necessary, um, we have seen some logistical shortages. Uh, right now, um, when it comes to housing, I think housing is up 30%. I think the value of vehicles is up 30%. I think construction materials, uh, some construction materials are up 200, 300%. Um, and as far as I understand, I literally just talked to an MMT guy a few weeks ago, is that uh, basically it's not necessarily the printing of money that's the problem. It's the printing of money in relation to like no economic activity. Part of that is because people are being paid more than what they would work. Or than problem is people are getting paid more than the, what they would if they were working. That's part of the problem. So are we, are we willing to concede as a panel that uh, basically you can't endlessly print money to solve problems or that these things need to be balanced or, uh, sure. you know, like, like, is the right wing completely useless and we should just print whatever the fuck we want, whatever it's we a, want? I don't think it's a question of like, go ahead. I don't think it's an MMT or it's like job is going to be to look at everything through the lens of like printing money. But I mean, when you look at coming out of like a historic downturn in like the global supply chain, if you you're going to see prices that are inflated it's probably not inflation caused to monetary policy it's probably inflation caused to like a failure in the supply chain so my problem with that is that could be absolutely correct but i know his like i know his reason for saying that and it's, for, it's he's covering for biden he doesn't want to admit that the guy he simmed for for the past like year or so has bad monetary and economic policy it's it's understandable but I wish he'd be a little bit more intellectually honest about it. So, like, there have been factories all over the world that... Like, the idea that you can just print trillions of dollars in money and try to raise the debt ceiling and do all this crazy fucking shit and not have inflation problems, you're out of your fucking mind. ...have had workers... Problem is, when Destiny gets on these panels and gets the defensive mode, he'd rather take a bullet between the eyes than give a concession to a conservative. ...laid off, um, that ha have, have, like, been closed for long periods of time, or that have had other problems or other shortages, and when that happens, it's going to drive up the cost of goods. Especially coming out of a pandemic now, when people are starting to buy things more than they were before, when, when, when these factors are trying to get the production back online, you're going to start to see flices, uh, prices be inflated. But economists are going to be worried to call that inflation until we've gotten, like, a few quarters through it to see where the prices ultimately end up at. Okay, at the, at the risk risk of being productive on a rumble panel, uh, basically uh, what that conversation boiled down to was the fact that that's been the case all of the time. Whether you're talking about the Weimar Republic, Venezuela, or any of these uh, prior examples, it basically is a relation of like logistical breakdown in relation to printing of money supply. So I know that you're saying like it's the logistical issues, not the inflation, um, but that's basically was like the historical analysis that w was presented to me was that that was always the case. Um, and yeah. COVID, no, it, no. one second, one second, almost done. Um, and then COVID very specifically is basically like one of the most drastic downturns and economic activity you're talking about like i don't know 30 percent of like the workforce basically partially because the the liberal states locked like half the country fucking down work from home or partial work model we're talking about retail and restaurant kind of revolutionizing over the past two years um so i would say that we don't know what the fuck is going on and we don't know what's going to happen so all i'm looking for is a little bit of concession and nuance and i'll leave it there I guess you can think about comparisons because wait you can think about you mama do was trying to go in after i'm gonna give it there go Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, the look, it's not just a matter of like of <laughs> concessions or anything like printing money isn't the only way to reallocate funds. We have funds that go all over the place. We have a ton of money that goes into the U.S. military. We have a ton of money that go that is lost in tax cuts that have been made to uh, the highest, the highest of the highest 
um, income uh, income earners in the country. Okay, this is not true. So we can go over this article. It says the truth about Trump's tax cuts by the numbers, not by Biden. So she Democrat often talks about appealing President Trump's tax cuts for the wealthy. Okay. According to the nonpartisan tax foundation, uh, with the CJ, uh, effect reduced effective tax rates for all income groups in 2018 because we have a progressive tax system. High earners pay the highest rates and receive the largest uh, rate reductions. However, lowering rates for a group of taxpayers does not necessarily reduce their share of the tax burden. Let's look at the impact on the top 1% of taxpayers. In uh, 2018, 1.6 million taxpayers reported earning uh, 500000 or more. Wait. While the amount all taxpayers owed the IRS in 2018 declined by uh, $64 billion, the amount these high earners owed increased by $16 billion. The share of the tax burden also increased. They accounted for, uh, they accounted for 22% total income uh, Income 2018, point increase over 2017, but the share of total income taxes rose to 40%, a 2.3 percentage point increase. Uh, by the way, you read that right, about 1.6 million, or 1% of all taxpayers, for 40% of the income tax burden due to the federal government. So, as a result of this uh, TC TCJA, high earners paid more taxes to the government, while everyone else paid less. They also paid a larger percentage of all taxes, while everyone else paid a smaller percentage. But what about the middle class specifically? Well, there is no accepted definition for the uh, sorry, continue, sorry. The middle class median family income in 2018 was $63,179. So let's look at taxpayers making between um, $50,000 and $100,000. In 2018, there were about 35 million taxpayers in this bracket, an increase of roughly $1 million over 2017, a growing middle class. In total, they owed $31 billion less in 2018 than in, 20, uh, in 2017. In other words, the middle, class, uh, the middle class got nearly half of the $64 billion decline in taxes overall under the program. As for the share of the tax burden, it also declined. While they accounted for 22% of total income, roughly the same as in 2017, their share of income taxes was 30, uh, 13%, sorry, not 30, over a, percentage point, oh, over a percentage point less than in 2017. Now let's look at tax rates making under $25,000. Number of tax rates is $52 million in 2018, a drop of $23 million in tax rates from 2017. In total, their tax liability declined 16, 16%, or $4 billion, from $25 billion in 2017 to $21 billion in 2018. Their share of the tax burden also declined. Those taxpayers accounted for 4% of the total income, roughly the same as in 2017, but their share of taxes was uh, was 1% slightly less than in 2017. So here are the results of the Trump tax cuts. The income tax burden for high earners increased $16 billion to 40% of the total owed. The income tax burden for middle class earners decreased by $31 billion to 13% uh, yeah, of total owed. The income tax burden for low-wage workers decreased by $4 billion to 1% of the total owed. Doesn't sound like much... Uh, doesn't sound like much of a tax cut for the wealthy. So why is why he keeps saying what he says? He's going on the podium. It's so much that liberals are ignorant that they know so many things that aren't so. Okay. Um, one reason high earners sh a share of the tax burden increases that uh, reduce the um, itemized deductions they were able to claim. High earners generally benefit more from itemizing deductions. Lower earners generally benefit more from the standard deduction. In total, the uh, CGO cut the amount taxpayers claim for itemized deductions in half from 1.3 trillion in 2017 to about 50 billion in 2018. Uh, elimination, of, uh, elimination of the deduction for state and local taxes, salt. <laughs> state and local taxes only. alone was responsible for 240 billion or 37% of that decrease. The salt deduction primarily benefits high earners in high tax blue states. Uh, despite claiming that he wants to increase taxes on high earners, Biden supports restoring the salt deduction, which would reduce them. Oh, I see. This is a. Uh, Oh, elimination of the deduction for Oh, it eliminated the salt. Okay. As for middle and lower wage earners, the number of tax returns... The standard increased by 20... Okay, so I think you get the point. This was not a tax... Uh, this was not a tax cut for the richest Americans. Okay. <laughs> I think what they're conflating here is the 21% corporate tax rate to the actual Trump tax cuts bill. They're conflating that. Okay, let's go back to this. Sure, we have so she's lying. Taxes that that um, have been cut based on on the size of enormous companies like Amazon. These are ways that we can get nice conspiracy. It's oh, uh, enormous companies like Amazon are they have a big business and they're lobbying for tax cuts. The money that we need. But what we do know is that there's been a that that COVID has sh like killed tons and tons of small businesses. COVID has killed. Uh uh COVID lockdowns. In put in place by Democrats. Uh, employment, like there's a, a retail worker shortage in America right now because it is so difficult to- uh, I love hate that Democrats will blame any of their failings of their policies on COVID. Like, it was COVID that killed these, killed these small businesses. No, that was the lockdowns you put in place. 
to re to get everybody back in for things that are opening up. And of course, that's not even getting into uh, talking about what happens if there's like a second wing of this pandemic with Delta variant, Lambda variant, whatever. The problem is that it's not just about printing money. Sure, that's one possible solution. There are many possible solutions. And I think the Dems need to be pushing very hard, like what? <laughs> hard on that. Because here's the thing, if what you're saying is true, that there's logistical issues, well, the logistics has been knocked out. It seems to me that it would be essential for the, this is the perfect time for the government to say, we need to jumpstart this logistics. We need to get things up and running again. We need to fund small businesses so that people can start making things again, so that people can start working again. We need to make sure that people have buff. I don't know if you can just pour money into the economy and that's how you restart the shit. I think you need to um, eliminate the shackles that are keeping the economy uh, economy held in this way. You need to open up the economy, lift restrictions. That's how you fucking do it. And then the gears of the machine will start uh, start rotating again. But just pumping money into it, I, I don't know if that's gonna. I don't know if that's gonna do. It. If they're not working, that money, it might go into the economy in a very small way of like, oh, you now can buy more, uh, more like comfort comforts and stuff like that, and so therefore, it comes into a very small. Uh, comes into the economy in a very small way. I don't think pumping money into the system is going to create the jumpstart that the economy needs right now. Offer um, so that they don't become homeless and lose their homes that worsens the economy. Just so you know, like people who don't have a home, it's really hard for them to get a job or work. That's going to seriously impact people's abilities to get their businesses up, uh, up running, especially if we're talking about corporations like massive corporations who were able to weather the pandemic and then they're going to have like old, like outdated hiring practices where they're not going to hire people because, oh, we, you know, maybe you don't have the right level of, of, of experience or whatever. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Um, what she's saying is, so meritocracy is an outdated hiring practice. What would she have instead? Diversity hires? Like, what do you mean? Hang on, I explained meritocracy in a really good fucking way. Let me see if I can find it. Okay, I found it. This was in a Destiny comment section. Still need to finish watching this video. So this person got, uh, back and says, The problem is with meritocracy that everyone thinks they, they're the one that has the most merit. So my response is, But we have ways of selecting out who actually has the merit, whether it's a job experience or what have you. We have ways to measure the amount of merit or skill you have in a certain field. That's why we have colleges. The prestige of the college you went to can, in some way, inform a potential employer of your skill or merit. Uh, for example, if I wanted to hire someone for a skill demonstration in Pac-Man, uh, all I'd have to do is look at their score, and I could judge right then and there who is most fit for the job. The problem with diversity quotas is you aren't selecting for skill, you're selecting for race or gender, which is meaningless in almost all scenarios. That new worker is almost going to be less skilled than if they hired based on merit. Sorry for word vomit. That's, that's why meritocracy is good. I don't know what Demon Mama would want instead, but like, holy fuck. It seems like she has a lot of fucking complaints about the society that we live in now, but no solutions to get us anywhere better. They're going to have shortages. So we seriously need the government to step in and go, we've experienced a global... Also, I don't think just because you hire for merit means you have shortages. Because, like, if I have, like, shortages of labor, I think. Like, if I have ten people, I'm, I'm going to hire from, like, let's say there's a pool of thirty people. I need to hire 10 people. I'm not just going to hire the top two or top three. I'm going to hire as many people I need for that position. What? <laughs> okay. Dude, like, sh Demon Mama is fucking insane. Full pandemic that has killed an, an, an all, a, a, a shocking number of people. We need to jumpstart the economy. I don't care if it's done through printing money or if it's done through reallocating taxes or if it's done through moving funds from somewhere else. But the reality is that America okay. is a country that's this supposed timer to serve is six the seconds short We're supposed too, to be but I started late. That? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna... <laughs> Wait, is there an actual timer on screen? I don't see it. We're supposed two, to be but, but I started I late. That? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call a time on that because that, that went off. <laughs> Even Dylan, Dylan can't handle that shit. For a while, I do want to throw it. Not perfectly. Like two minutes and twelve seconds almost. Jesus Christ. Yeah, so um, I agree mostly with Demon Mama on that, but I think one of the things that people are missing out on is that um, a huge part of the pandemic was also a realization 
um, that certain industries are kind of outdated. I think the biggest example of this is movie theaters. You're seeing some movies being pushed into theaters and some people returning, especially as vaccines get rolled out more. Um, but you're also seeing some, uh, some areas where movies are not being put in theaters and instead they're being viewed even more so on streaming services. I didn't go to a movie theater to watch the new Black Widow movie. I watched it on Disney+. Plus. Oh God, the fucking, I hate superhero movies. I don't know how you could watch them. I mean, I guess if that's your thing, fine. But that's the new trend they've jumped on ever since, like, fucking Iron Man. Like, oh my god, it's it's been almost ten years. Let it die. So you're gonna see a lot of movie theaters shutting down, people losing jobs from that. Not to mention, a huge way the economy is fueled is by people spending. You gotta spend, and, and that typically results in the economy growing. Unfortunately, right now, due to the pandemic, a lot of people are short on money, or they're hoarding it because they don't know what's coming. They want to make sure they can fill, pay bills. If people have the money to be able to buy things, not just their basic, uh, you know, groceries that they need and whatnot, you're gonna see... Sounds like we need tax cuts. ...the economy <laughs> grow. Lot but sounds like we need a good old conservative policy tax cuts for everybody. A lot of people have been saying and staying inside, saving their money. If they even have money, they might have lost their jobs. Um, uh, stimulus bills are a good way of dealing with this, and I've, I've oh, not, not looked much into more, more money, but... Yeah. I don't want to call it. Wait, 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 not when, I, I'm going to block oh that shot and throw it the loner. Oh my god. I'm sorry. Dude, yeah, just maybe... Uh, yeah, because every time when I hear people talking about this, I feel like it's always worth remi remem like reminding people just how not very overwhelming a lot of this is. Like, it, it's overwhelming in the sense that America hasn't really done anything like this since, I don't know, the, maybe the 60s, but, like, if you look at the comparison to other countries like one of the things in this uh, infrastructure plan is like that they said was groundbreaking is like a uh, half a million uh, electric vehicle charging points well compare that to germany much smaller country they're going for a million so um as far as comparing to other countries like this is it really his solution is like electric vehicle charging points like that's that's really what we need right now <laughs> this isn't as dramatic as it might Listen, if, if there's room in the market for it, yeah, sure, go for it. I see. And then, I, I don't know, with inflation, then, yeah, if there are inflationary pressures, then you have to maybe raise interest rates or, God forbid, raise taxes. And maybe that's why this kind of plan is starting with Biden kind of testing the waters, because there is a there's going to be a big political risk there involved down the line. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's not that. So well, far, it's pretty movie, underwhelming. I'm giving I'm giving it to uh, Sprouticus, and then I'm going to give it to... Trihex who hasn't talked in a while. Moving it back. Oh God, Trihex. <laughs> oh fuck. Back a little bit. There's there's a reason. Dima Mala brings up all the people who uh, aren't working, right? There's a reason people aren't working. It's because Biden has failed to do his job. Biden has failed to end the federal unemployment bonuses that people are getting. People are getting paid way too much to sit at home and to not be going to look for a job, and that is what that is what is hurting the job market. What Biden needed to do was needed. To True. It's why UBI is so bad in those benefits and start pushing people to go out and get a job. But the re reason they're not is because they're comfortable getting money, they're comfortable not working a job, and they're just going to continue to get this extra money. And people are getting paid way too much to sit at home and to not be going to look for a job, and that is what that is what is hurting the job market. What Biden needed to do was needed to end those benefits and start pushing people to go out and get a job. But the re reason they're not is because they're comfortable getting money, they're comfortable not working a job, and they're just going to continue to get this extra money and not work a job until Biden until Biden ended it. Now that Biden did end it way later than he should have, um, states are still continuing to keep this going. Um, states, even, even like Indiana, uh, with the rhino who is the governor of Indiana, um, it's still going in Indiana. Uh, but this this is the reason you see the in job market it's not because people aren't don't need money it's because there's too much being money being sent by the government to these people to where they don't feel that they need to work do you mind yeah, if I, said I, guess, I don't yeah. i don't think that there's was, any people getting that. unemployment that that are okay. not getting a job because Wait. they think unemployment Man. is yeah is enough i don't think there's a lot of people i mean that's that. just empirically false like the most i mean it's not empirically at, false yeah. okay how because that seems to be just logically true like, you're telling me, okay, if we put up a, 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 uh, a dichotomy between, let's say, if I would make more money playing Splatoon or actually going to war, if I would, like, if I would get paid more for playing Splatoon rather than actually going to war, I'm gonna play fucking Splatoon. Like, obviously, if I'm gonna get paid more for sitting at home than working a job, obviously, that's what I'm gonna do. Like, <laughs> it just seems obvious. So I don't know what evidence would go against that. Like, that just seems to be basic logic. Like, if I can sit in my ass and, like, at home, 
get paid more money than um, if I were to work, then I don't. <laughs> it, it's hard to argue. Like that's like a, a, a smell test or a six feet above test or whatever. Like, just logically, it doesn't make sense that that wouldn't have an impact. Like, I don't know how you could take a st like maybe you could take a study and manip uh, like manipulate the results, sort of like how a lot of lefties do with crime. But I don't know, man. Like, it would take a whole lot of convincing to say that like that's not happening. I guess that's the M.O. of, um, lefties now, just gaslight and, uh, say that what's actually happening isn't happening. It's actually, you look at the it's three, there's four people talking at the same time. Okay, try hex. Well, actually, before I even clap on that, stop, wait here. Oh, okay. This part annoyed the fuck out of me, okay? If you want to reach a point of, like, mutual understanding and bridge building and unity and all that hippy dippy crap, um, so one of the things Trihex could do in this next segment is, uh, to, uh, steal man. If he has a good understanding of what the opponent's arguments are, he could steal man them and say, here's why I, I, underst I understand why you're, uh, thinking this, but you're wrong, blah, blah, blah. Let's see how he responds. We're gonna save time. Okay, Trihex. Well, actually, before I even clap on that, so way your earlier point here about, like, the crisis at the border wall and all that, bro, I think, I think you're consuming way too much Fox News propaganda because... When <laughs> okay. So we have a double miss. <laughs> okay. So his understanding of what the conservative side has said in this debate so far has been, with the prices at the border, bro, have you even been paying attention? Also, like, so I love the, like, you've been watching too much Fox News propaganda. Well, what are your sources, bro? Fucking show them. Like, <laughs> it's, like, not even like a, I haven't even been listening to what the fuck you've been saying. Kind of like sociopathic shit. That's insane. J just to, just to reiterate, the problems are, Biden has abnegated his responsibility in regards to the border, as um, seem to rush to, uh, to make it someone else's responsibility upon doing so. Also, because of certain policies, there have been massive amounts of inflation with certain, like, prices of, like, lumber and shit going up. Those are the two claims. Like, <laughs> okay. What you're, what you're really rooting here is the, the idea that if, like, ex politicians not visit the border to see He's the crisis going on right there, that obviously they, they don't care. Subordinates can't go, uh, you know, traverse there, visit there, and then relay it from me. But I don't think she has. <laughs> ...to the appropriate people so they can carry out the agenda required necessary to what they were uh, told in the first place. But I even go back further here, because whenever, like, because what the frame you gave there is one that's reminiscent to me of, like, whenever someone like AOC visited uh, the border detention centers and, you know, cried. Okay, first of all, and, and three strikes, buddy, you're out. <clears throat> okay. AOC is not the president. She just, like, I don't know what her exact position is. Like, she's a house member. I don't. One of her tasks is not to. She's not tasked with dealing with the border. Her constituents are nowhere near the southern border. Unless they're, like, Southern California, maybe. I don't know. Wait, is she from fucking California or New York? Honestly, I can't remember. But. <laughs> I don't care that much about AOC. But, like, <laughs> dog, those two things aren't the same thing. She did it for a photo op, but Bi Biden, if he did it, would be to assess damages or, like, see what the fucking problem is and then to um, put policy forward to assess the, or to deal with those. But these are totally different. Also, I'm pretty sure, wasn't she looking at, like, a sidewalk or something? I heard something about her crying about a driveway. Biden was, and was like, really uh, distraught what she was witnessing. Um, you know, that got played up in X. <laughs> I, I hope she's, uh, willing to bring up those cages, um, you know, during Biden. It's so funny, all the liberal angst about Trump and kids in cages. And <laughs> under Biden, we have the same thing. Despite all their rage, there are still immigrants in a cage. <laughs> the Democrats, that was their, num like, number one bitching point for a long time. <clears throat> they did nothing about it. Partisan mainstream media outlets as like, a, oh, look at them doing their thing now. So honestly, I feel like what you're doing there is the same shit that you see elsewhere. Whenever it's, you know, whenever it's the side you want to hate on, 
doing it as well. So I think no, the, if you you can't even properly recite their arguments. How do you think you could understand the difference between these two? I think that point was completely garbage. And then going into the whole thing. About <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I think that's a bit of projection. I'm oh, sorry. You're yes. getting a lot of points deducted right now for terrible fucking mic quality. True. Uh, I am. You're, oh, you're, you're oh, I have the wrong mic. Oh, okay. yeah. ooh, ooh. What's with left wing audio? God. Look, my audio wasn't perfect. I have I have noise in the background almost always while I'm here. Example. Um, the 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 thing is, right? Uh, though, a right wing audio just never seems to get on point. This guy. What a weird fucking like. Thing to say like why would you stereotype a group of people based on their audio like that seems a little yikers my dude like oh, i'm sorry um oh, no one told me no one i'll told bring me. it back to you after somebody else crack. yeah yeah my bad so, so, um so try hex try hex you're, you're gonna try i mean he kind of came after me but go ahead he kind of kind of came after me but go ahead yeah but you know you you addressed me directly i just want to i just want to address that so first of all like this stuff about like Oh yeah, people who are already struggling and unemployed, they'll just they'll just go they'll go get a job uh, if you force them to go out. That's, that is just ridiculous. First, that's absolutely true. That's how our economy runs. Listen, okay, we can have some amount of like, okay, what Demon Mom was suggesting here is absolutely ridiculous. If they won't get a job, what? Why would? <laughs> I I'm trying to run this down in my brain. What the logic path goes to in the world that would look like under her under her like logic i think like if we get rid of like they won't get a job because they need to get like okay okay this is <laughs> i'm confounded by how fucking retarded that was okay so she's saying if we get rid of certain benefits that they will not get a job like the idea that they'll get a job if we get rid of certain benefits is silly that is the crux of what our entire economy is based on, like our service economy. People need to get a job to be able to afford shit and to be able to afford a living. That has been the foundation of America for 200, 300 years since its, since its uh, fucking birth. Is she saying that's ridiculous? I... <laughs> now, maybe what she's saying is like, oh, if we cut welfare, they'll get a job. But that wouldn't be an accurate response to what he was saying. Whatever. First of all, that doesn't happen in any other country. Like, uh, Canada was was giving a universal basic income, and their economy uh, had you know people were still spending, people were still buying food. It, it's it's very well. Hold on, what is what does Canada's UBI look like? They're still also hold up. They're still spending. They're still buying food. Yeah, no one's disagreeing with that. If you have more money, obviously you're going to be spending and buying food. But the contention with UBI is people aren't going to want to get a job. If it pays for their shit, they're not going to want to get a job. Obviously. Like, but she, she's she's just like, she's a 2D object in a 3D space. She's just in a different dimension of understanding of these issues. Very stabilizing. The idea that, like, you make more money on unemployment uh, than you do with a job, it's just, it's just ridiculous. Currently, that seems to be the way that the Biden bills were. Which, I don't think she's, I think she's talking about general, not with the, the specific COVID stimulus. I think she's just talking about general. Like, oh, if we cut welfare, they'll get a job. Like, or like, they make more job, they make more on, on welfare than they do getting a job. Like, I, I don't, I don't even know, if, even if we were talking about just general with like social spending or whatever, I don't even know if that would be true. Okay, so I went and uh, looked up some shit. We're going to look at a couple websites. We'll start with the Cato Institute, and then we'll look at Washington Post's response to it. And then we'll check a couple things to see which one is right. Okay. So, the federal government funds 100, uh, 126 separate programs targeted for low-income people, 72 of which provide these cash and kind benefits to individuals. Okay. Uh, so, okay. Maybe we can aid from numbers at any point in time. So, we'll start with here. They have pack package benefits of worth 38000 Well, that might not sound. Okay. So here's, well, that might not sound overly generous. Remember that welfare benefits aren't taxed while wages are true. I don't think wages should be taxed, or at least if you're going to tax one, tax them both, or rather not tax them. So that's, that's kind of shit. Like, 
Dude, imagine like the socialist, like you work for your wage slave or whatever, and now you get taxed. Like, I really could get a socialist to agree that wage taxes are shit. Um, okay. Someone in New York would have to earn more than $21 per hour to be better off than they would be on welfare. It's more than the average statewide entry level salary for a teacher. Okay. Also, when we need added costs such as paying for childcare, transportation, and clothing. True. And with that, despite the work requirement, including the 1996 welfare reform, only 27.6% of adult welfare subjects in New York are working in uh, unsubsidized jobs. Another 13% are involved in the more broadly defined work participation, which includes job search, training, and other things. It's slightly more generous than Connecticut. Wage goes in value of benefits for a mother and two children reach from a high of uh, 60,000, roughly 500, uh, 60,500 in Hawaii to 11,150 in Idaho and 33 states in the District of Columbia. Welfare pays more than an $8, hour, uh, eight an hour job. In 12 states in D.C., the welfare package is more generous than a 15 an hour job. Of course, not everyone in welfare gets all seven of the benefits in our study. Long term dependence welfare clearly pays substantially more than an entry level job. Okay. To be clear, there's no evidence that people on welfare are lazy. Indeed, surveys of them consistently show their desire for a job. But they're also not stupid. If you pay them more not to work uh, than you, they can earn by working, they will choose not to work. This is true. While this makes sense for them in the short term, this may actually hurt them over the long term. One of the most important steps toward avoiding but getting out of poverty is a job. True. Only 2.6% of full-time workers are poor. Only uh, versus 23% uh, 23.9% of adults who don't work. And while many anti-poverty activists decry low-wage jobs, even starting at a minimum wage job can be a springboard out of poverty. True. If you're climbing the ladder, especially in like a skill-related job or whatever, like that can be a huge shift in income. Especially if we don't tax that income. This provides generous welfare payments. We not actually not. Is there, okay. Should be a public policy reference for work over welfare. True. Well, it'd be nice to raise the. So the government has no ability to do so. Studies show that attempts to mandate wage increases such as minimum wage hikes primarily result in, uh, in higher unemployment for the lowest skilled workers. True. Okay, Congress. That should consider strengthening work requirements and welfare programs, uh, removing exceptions, and narrowing the definition of work. I like the idea of doing a 50 50 program where you get 50% up front and then 50% once you have a job. I think that'd be neat. Because I, I don't know about necessarily um, narrowing. I don't know what it would be now. I guess if you're, you would have to work, that would be. Yeah, maybe, but like I like the idea of a 50 50 where like. The other 50, you have to actually be working, not searching. Where you get the 50 essentially while you're searching, and then the 50 as you're working. I like that idea. And then and then we kind of scale that down a little bit, like the diminishing returns as your income increases, until you no longer need it. I like that. I like that. I really dig that. That's a cool policy I just thought of. Okay, let's look at Wapo. Is welfare the highest paying entry level job? And 35 states, read the study again. Okay, let's... Okay, they say the Cato Institute's 2013 study. We just skipped over the part where they were uh, repeating that study. Oh, and here's here's the part where they, they muddy the waters. I don't know if it's intentionally or just... Okay, a minimum wage job is not necessarily the same as and could pay lower than an entry-level job. This is true, I think. Okay, and then they put the stat here. There's a reason why doing a collectivized, like, stat gathering on, like, entry-level jobs is a bit silly. And we'll move over to competitive wages versus minimum wages. <clears throat> okay. This entry-level job figures have will understand the difference uh, between competitive wages and minimum wages. Okay, if we understand what a minimum wage is, competitive wage is one that is in line with what other industry employers offer workers to the same jobs. Okay. Um, this is heavily marketized based on your industry, and I imagine maybe even based on your location. For example, if you get paid for the same job in San Francisco, I don't think you get paid for the same job in San Francisco versus Texas. So I imagine there are individual local markets there too. For like, let's say, um, just for easy maths, let's say in San Fran you get paid twenty-five dollars. Whereas Texas, you get 10, or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, that that's probably localized, like, as well, depending on where you live and what 
the average um, cost of living is. So they're taking something that is incredibly dependent on certain specific industries and areas and broadening that to a stat. That is so stupid. So, yeah, I just... I don't like... We have a couple... I think one more to, uh, site to go through, but that is essentially it. You can see the economic impact, excessive minimum wage actually harm workers by causing resistance to freeze hiring or layoff staff. True. Minimum wage is basics, as explained by the employment website. Indeed, minimum wage refers more to the efforts of employers to attract workers through industry standard wages. Okay. I could be wrong, they could be the sta um, same across, like, the entire country, but I imagine they'd be different depending on the cost of living. Alright, let's go to most minimum wage jobs lead to better paying opportunities. Okay. So, it doesn't need to rise. Two-thirds minimum wage workers make above the minimum wage a year later. True, this is what I'm talking about. Ladder scaling. Once you get into a job and you, um... Like, you get a raise or your promotion or whatever, your income will begin to increase. That'll be a marginal increase in your standard of living as well. That's the best thing about the mar that's the best thing about capitalism. That's the best thing about work. That's the best thing about our current system. You can scale. You don't just have a spawn point. One thing that really pissed me off about uh, Hassan when he was talking to that Christian Walker guy, he said, I got lucky. I had a good spawn point. No, it's not about spawn point. It's about because your uncle created a really popular leftist news network, and that gave your family a lot of money. And I don't, I don't know if they had a lot of money beforehand. Oh, and also, you got really popular as a streamer because you were a good streamer. Like, is there maybe a small amount of luck in whether something goes viral, whether a media corporation lives or dies? Maybe. Whether a video go, goes viral? Maybe. But that's not the same as saying, I just had a good spawn point. I didn't earn anything to get it. That's not true. Like, like you have the $3 million mansion you have now because people watch you stream for whatever reason. People in the market of streaming, they've decided that you will be their number one for whatever fucking reason. But that's, that's the case. You didn't just get a good spawn point. Also, you could totally fuck it up. Like... There's, very, there's a huge possibility that you could do something that could get you banned off Twitch, and suddenly your income will decrease. It's not just about luck. Yeah, that's stupid. Reduce the availability of those entry-level jobs. True. Minimum wage increase for the very hunger stuff. The help. True. Entry-level jobs for less experience. Okay. Congress increased the federal minimum wage to... Okay. Yes, this part, this part is fucking based. Minimum wage jobs are the first rung on a career ladder that, for most, soon leads to higher paying work. True! True! If you get minimum wage jobs or entry level positions. Okay. I was. I think I misread this because minimum wage jobs are entry level positions. I think. I was thinking. I think I was reading it backwards. Like, entry level positions are often minimum wage. Okay, yeah. Still, this is a base fucking website. People shit on the Heritage Foundation, but it seems pretty good. So I, I just want to go over, the, cover, like, the fog that has been cast over this entire wage versus welfare debate that, that's been put up by the Washington Post. They said that entry-level positions and minimum wage positions aren't the same. That is true. But if you are making more than um, in your entry-level position, in your, uh, in your competitive wage position, then if you would on welfare, you're probably not going to stay on welfare. So if you are making more on welfare than you would working at your minimum wage, then, um, yeah, that still holds true. This, this heuristic still holds true. Like, this is true, and the Washington Post even admits it. Okay, here it is. They actually admit it right here. I think there's a point here in which essentially that welfare can provide benefits exceed what a person would end up taking home from their job. True! He even admits it! But they have to muddy the water. Like... Like... And then they... They... Go down here, they gave it three Pinocchios? Really? Like, that... That's insanely dishonest. There must be some level of, like... Ideological bias here. That has to, like... Obviously... 
there's ideological bias that can permeate through um, uh, through different articles. You might have a counter argument saying, what about Cato? What about the Heritage Foundation? The problem is there are things that are true no matter what political bias. There might be some political bias here, but the underlying truth about what they're saying is true. Whereas the Washington Post has to, like, has to muddy the waters and get super nuanced about, like, oh, well, entry-level jobs and minimum wage jobs aren't always the same thing. Like, oh, oh, come on. Come on. Like, really? Anyway. Yeah, that is, uh, it. Back to the video. It's probably only, like, two fucking hours long now. Great. Ridiculous. People aren't going out because of a couple reasons. One, they can't find the work. Two, they can't actually get the job because of whatever reason. <laughs> they can't find the work. Oh. When we have, like, fucking, like, <laughs> help for hire, like, j jobs openings signs fucking everywhere. They can't find work. <laughs> she's, she's crazy. Or three, um, they're still scared of the pandemic or their workplace no longer exists anymore. Like, this is... So now we're going back to talking about the pandemic, even though, like, oh, okay, she's flip-flopping around between dimensions, she's like fucking playing Fez, she's like flip, flipping around 2D angles and a th like 3D object, like, okay, now we're talking about COVID, well, okay, first of all, I don't, hang on, let me think, she said they're not going to back to work because they're scared of COVID, but they're unable to make that decision because of the Biden um, stimulus. So they're essentially. <laughs> also, I don't know how many people are so scared of COVID that they're not willing to go back to work. I feel like, as a streamer, your like priorities are a little bit mangled. So like, COVID is the the worst, most like horrible thing you can imagine as a super rich streamer, because you don't have to worry about like finding a job. Your your job job availability is never going to be a concern to uh for you because you stream. So I think like, that's where like the conversation about like stuff that really doesn't, so like I feel the priorities are mangled where like COVID is the most scary thing and not like job availability. So I think she's projecting that onto people a little bit. This is just, this is just like literally like stock, pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Like I don't, I don't feel like this is a <laughs> The web, it exists, it's real. What is the web thing? Okay, so the web thing is you have like these vague associations and all you try to do is you try to get somebody into the web, and then once they're caught, you can like funnel them down into like the baser thing. That's it. Because it is real, I, and I see it now. I see the webs everywhere, okay? It's like the matrix. Once you see the code, and then you go out, you're like, holy fuck, he's trying to web that dude. Or like, that guy that's struggling right now to fight it, he can't, he's in the web. He's already gotten webbed, okay? You have to be able to see the web to, to get out of the web. No, you can't get out of the web. You gotta see the web to avoid the web. Okay, but the web. Okay, I haven't seen. I didn't. I didn't see the web before. Okay, because there, it's hard to see. Silk is very fine. All right, spider ship. Okay, it's very hard to see unless the sunlight hits it just right. Okay, and the sun shined in my mind, and I saw the web. Okay, just by hearing one noise. Right, I have like this web of assumptions that I have just by hearing that one thing. Um, we can say like politically, okay? If the central point of my web is like, this is a horrible racist person, maybe one branch out of that is like, they're a Nazi. Maybe one branch out from that is like, they're an alt-writer. Maybe one branch out from that is like, they're a fascist. Maybe another branch out from that might be like, they support um, the thin blue line. They support MAGA, Trump. They'll use things like um, all lives matter, right? What happens is if you follow that branch that I just made, I can't draw it, that web, okay? Is if I go to debate somebody, Instead of actually engaging with their points, I'm gonna to try to get them on one of the points of the web, on the outer part, and then I'm gonna to try to funnel them down inside, right? So the way that I see this happening is, I, I, so I, I started to read my, my quote tweets more to see how other people talk about what I say. Um, and I've noticed this because like, I'm always really frustrated. I'm always really frustrated because I feel like I'm never having arguments with people. And I realize now why. It's because they're in the web. So if I tweet something out like, hey, I think that, um, I think that we shouldn't have riots. The responses are never like, actually destiny, rioting can be an effective way to raise awareness for a movement, or actually destiny, rioting is just inevitability of the state's oppression of a person, or actually destiny, um, <clears throat> rioting maybe should be opposed, but it's not the people, it's never this. Instead, it's like, 
Destiny supports killing protesters. Destiny is a fascist. Destiny loves the cops. Destiny, right? It's never actually engaging with the point. It's just trying to get me somewhere on the web, and then all the people past that can just funnel me down. We need to talk about bootstraps and what that actually means. So nobody, no conservative ever, is saying like, well, fuck you, bro. You like, it's all on you. Like, n nobody's saying that. What they're saying is, there might be shit that, like, that's kind of fucked about the situation you're in, but there's stuff that you can do to avoid that. That's obvious, like, and these people don't understand that argument, so when Destiny does the uh, Just Move thing, <laughs> Vosh tries to identify it as a bootstrap meme. But even if you have to put down first and last month of rent, you can pick a cheaper place. It'll save you money, ultimately. Isn't this the bootstrap meme? No, it's not the bootstrap meme. Doing anything to improve your life condition is not a bootstrap, dude. Like, Jesus Christ, poor people are some of the most financially fucking retarded people in the whole fucking world. And like, people are like, oh yeah, well, you know, you can't help but rack up massive credit card debt and take out payday loans and live in expensive places and never fuck. No, like, there are things that you can do to, to like, improve your conditions. Like, yeah, like, maybe, you know, social programs and all that other shit are good to talk about. But don't sit there and act like poor people are just this fucking amorphous blob of, like, fucking, like, brain matter lacking, like, dipshits that are literally incapable of doing anything positive to improve their conditions. It's so fucking dehumanizing and not true. And stupid, too. It reeks of fucking dipshit-ass college kid that has no fucking idea what any of those conditions are like. Like, oh yeah, when you're poor, you can never ever move. You can never ever do anything ever. You have no choice but to max everything on our credit cards and do nothing. Like, Christ, it's so fucking stupid. Holy shit. What about getting a new job, Destiny? That isn't always easy at all. Maybe not if you're living in the most, like, fucking populated parts of the fucking world. It's not. Oh, here he comes. The unemployment right now in the United States is literally 3.5%. You can't find a job now, just fucking end it all. You're never going to be anything in life. Nothing is going to help you. No amount of welfare, no amount of UBI, no amount of social... You're never going to make it. Just stop. Give up. Go back and live with your fucking parents forever. Or fucking just walk off a, a fucking cliff. Like, no, like, nobody says just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. Everybody says, a lot of conservatives say, Hey, there are things you can do to make things more positive, like... Maybe if you didn't have a kid outside of wedlock, maybe that would have better positive outcomes for you, or maybe you could do this or that. Maybe if you're a black father and you've got a black or a black mother and uh, in a single family household and you got a black kid, maybe you can like excise rap music or like bad influences like gangster rap or something, and that could like reduce. I feel like uh, I would have to go into this, and it's a broader rant, but I feel like fatherlessness plus gangster rap is a really fucking terrible like terrible combination and th that would be going going into a whole ramp rant but like it's not just pull yourself off by your bootstraps it's like hey there are things you can do to marginally increase your positive outcomes and don't just sit here waiting for the fucking uh top-down policies from bernie sanders or joe biden to come i think that's pretty reasonable the only way these lefties get by with making their arguments look good is via straw man like this it's a serious argument the idea like oh yeah if you give them uh, unemployment during a global pandemic where 600,000 Americans oh hold on nobody's saying giving them stimulus or whatever going during the problem is is that it seems to be that they were getting paid more for being on unemployment than it was for their job I don't mind if what Biden should have done is like okay let's say we get 2,000 just have a nice like um even number let's say for not working you get 1,000 or whatever and then for working you get another thousand so you get 1,000 up front and then 1,000 after. So like you could, you're um, encouraged to, incentivized to go back into the workplace. It's all about like where your incentives line up and what you're incentivizing people to do. People re uh, will react predictably to certain situations. So the way you have incentives uh, set up can like predict um, certain outcomes. So like, so like when people argue against like, oh, with th this Biden policy, this unemployment doesn't do what you say it does. And it's like, they're not staying home and not working because of the, um, the, uh, fucking stimulus or whatever. It's like, uh, I don't, you're arguing against human character and, like, human behavior. You're arguing it's, like, natural human instinct there. Like, I don't know what study you could show that disproves this, but, like, I don't know. It's, like, humans will react predictably to shit, like, and that's why incentives are super important when it comes to any sort of policy. You have to think about that. And I, I just don't think m most liberals think about that.
over 600,000 Americans have died, that it's just like, it should be, it should be, it should reflect on them. This idea of like, like secret welfare. What the fuck is, no one said that because, uh, because you die, it reflects on you or whatever. Unless you're like fucking, uh, rubbing up against people with COVID. It's not <laughs> She's straw manning like really bad. Queens sucking up everything. That's so ridiculous. This is fear mongering. It doesn't have any basis in reality. Oh, uh, <laughs> fear mongering from the climate panic alarmist. And that never was as a real quick thing. And, so and hold off on that. No, because I have a point. I have a point. Another point that I want to say. Something that I wanted to respond I give, to. I, Sam. I give you. I'm gonna give you 15 seconds, and then we gotta move it on because we only have three minutes left in the round. I wanted to address something specific that, that Zan brought up, which is, you know, it'd be amazing to see something that we had in America for a very long time, public arts pro projects. You want to get people spending, you want to get people out doing things in the economy again, have the government fund and, and put some stuff out there. Movie theaters are gone under. Let's get better tax cuts for artists. That stuff. Never, never, never once, never once did I suggest. Yeah, sounds cool. After never once out, we're going to Destiny, then Trihex, and we're ending the round. Okay. Fuck Dylan, by the way, but pay attention to how many times the liberal gets the last word in the uh, in the round. Because Demon Mamba just went on a huge straw meeting tirade, and now what he's doing is, well, I guess Sproticus gets it, and then it's like Destiny, and then that's how the the round ends. Like, ugh. Never once did I suggest that the extra unemployment benefits wasn't needed during the coronavirus. We are in the recovery stage. It needed to be ended far before Biden. Yeah. It's not that you don't need the fucking stimulus, it's that you need to be careful about what you're incentivizing people to do. That seems pretty obvious. Actually ended it. And actually where you see a lot of un well, a lot of people not going to jobs, a lot of people that are seeking for jobs, it's uh, low-skilled jobs. And these low-skilled jobs, the, in some states, in most states, they're making more money off of the federal unemployment benefits than they would be if they actually went to work. Um, so the idea that you're saying that uh, people, aren't, people aren't doing this, people aren't doing this, it's fear-mongering, it's not. Um, it's not fear migrant at all. And going back to Trihex, talking about the border wall, um, or the border, uh, so Kamala Harris was in charge of the border. Uh, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been precedent uh, for decades that presidents and or whoever's in charge of whatever goes down and checks it out with their own eyes, not send someone else down to come back and report to them. Um, that's just been precedent, especially when you're going through a crisis like we were going through the border no, crisis. Uh, but not only that, but Biden actually- So Trihex interrupts here. Actually, Biden actually anyway. reversed a lot of what was going on, right? So Biden actually made a made the uh, made the border a lot worse than it was during we Trump. It. Sprout, we gotta cut you off. We're running out okay. of time. I have to throw the Trihex Destiny. You both got like 30 seconds max. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's also usually two liberals back to back. Um, whatever you were talking about earlier is a bunch of nonsense here. Ultimately, it's an. Oh God, I hate the I hate the way Trihex argues. It's so dismissive. It's such like, like. I, I can see the way he sees conservatives. It's like conservatives are all evil, hateful people, and the world would be better if they were all dead. That's that's the kind of feeling I get from him that he thinks. I know it. It's the way it's the way he treats people. Adequate wages going on in the first place, right there. They've always been trash. They've been stagnant for a very, very long time now, since what 2009. Um, uh, increasing the minimum wages is an overwhelmingly popular thing. It's even been popular in Republican utopia of Florida, and uh, that has failed to be done because uh, too many moderate. Yeah, increase the minimum wage, but not like. Like to 12 at max, not like 15. For a Democrat, senators are, are pieces of shit, obviously, and I can shit on both ends on that spectrum completely here. And uh, obviously, you should be pro. Um, you should be pro some kind of injection of of um, of wealth into like this declining, shrinking middle class because uh, the poverty. <laughs> okay, hold on. Declining, shrinking middle class. From okay, from what I remember. It was during COVID, during like the 2020, the middle class actually grew. Or maybe, maybe they didn't, okay, maybe I'm thinking that like, maybe what he's saying is like shrinking as in there's less middle class people. But from what I understand, the people who like work in white collar jobs that like, that stay at home shit really made out well. Like, that's my understanding. I don't know what he means by that. I don't know. The poverty, um, the poverty floor in this country is really, really bad. That means, and, and long, long story short, it's really, really bad for the economy overall. When you have a d declining, shrinking middle class altogether, um, just kind of keeping some bullet points here. As I'm short on time. Okay, gotta throw it over to Destiny. Also, I don't know if, aside from like in San Francisco, we have like a lot of homeless people in tents or whatever. I don't think this country has a lot of abject poverty. I think there's a lot of like poor people. I don't know what you would mean by poverty. 
because you can load that word in a lot of like different ways. Is poverty having like no house and being homeless, or is poverty having like like a mini fridge and like just not being able to afford anything, to having to go paycheck to paycheck? Like you can you can phrase that in so many different ways. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of rumors about, uh, firstly, Canada didn't have a UBI. Um, secondly, there's a lot of points being brought up about how unemployment insurance might be causing an increase in unemployment in states. A ton of economists have dug into that data. They've looked at like different industries that are affected by unemployment insurance, different industries that aren't, different states that have ended it early. Uh, Wait, is he saying unemployment? Okay, from what I understand, it wasn't necessarily the unemployment insurance. It was just all of the stimulus in general. It could be wrong, but if you're... Okay, here's the problem. If you're looking for one specific type of thing, okay, maybe that one specific type of thing doesn't have the effect, but a broad amount of unemployment plus all the stimulus, plus more stimulus, like, if people are getting money in combination with all those things outweighs how much they make in their job, obviously they're not going to go to work. But if, it's, if you're just looking for one specific thing, I don't know if you're being good faith in this. Most economists believe that there's like a marginal impact, like a very small impact on unemployment insurance on the current unemployment rate. So the and idea that you guys massive amount of um, unfilled job spots. Why is that happening? Turning people working is probably not true. To bring it back to like, has Biden done a good job or not a good job? The amount of stimulus that the United States has poured into its citizens over the like entire coronavirus pandemic period. So he kind of gets it, but he doesn't quite put it put two and two together. That it's not just the uh, unemployment; it's also the stimulus. But okay. I, I guess he just sees war as good and doesn't. He, no one has also like answered Connor's question of like, do we agree that we can just print money or do we need to have some sort of like protections on that? No one has answered that adequately. It has been higher than I think any other countries in the world except for like Japan. Uh, we spent a ton of stimulus on this country. A lot of that came. From I I feel like it's just a like a childlike so simplistic view of like, more stimulus equals good like. We have to be a little bit more strategic with how we do shit, man. From the Biden coronavirus relief bill, which I think is awesome. Um, that is a form of UBI to people that have children that file for their child tax credit early. Uh, I think it's one Child tax credit seems pretty based. I imagine it would have happened under Republicans at this time if uh, Trump had won. We uh, maintained control of the Senate. I don't think that's a, like, I think that was pretty um, nonpartisan, like, unilateral, unilateral support. So I think. If Republicans were in office, they definitely would have put that forward, especially since a lot of them are like huge pro family, nuclear family shit. The coolest things Biden's done, and I think that's why he's been a base president over the coronavirus period. I Eat. have. Oh, round's over. I have already been told by the judges who's getting kicked out for this round. So, three votes. Oh, two of them actually. Wait, let me wait for Vadim. America Nacho. I'm sorry to say, you are Fuck. out of here. Um, I gotta say, you it's always the conservatives that get uh, like dropped off. You have gone the furthest in hippy dippy history with saying absolutely nothing in the contestant's history. Uh, Dude, I hate how fucking passive aggressive Dylan is. Holy fuck. Um, He's such a Mitch. It was beautiful. It was beautiful, and I think it was a huge <laughs> statement. Okay. Cool. So I think that's a good spot to uh, end it. Um, this video is originally going to be the first two, uh, uh, first two topics, but the first one ended up going super long, and the video would have been about like two hours. So I just had to cut it off here. I will say one thing I do like is counterpoints a little. Why are we uh, sucking off a fascist lefty or a fascist neolib? It totally like put a wrench in the momentum of every lefty to where now instead of having instead of responding at him, they have to respond to him, like, which is, it, I don't know if he meant it's like a debate tactic or something, but that was fucking brilliant, like, it totally, like, shut down their entire momentum, but yeah, this, I hope I've demonstrated that these conversations are hot garbage, and, uh, yeah, next time we'll talk about the, uh, death penalty, I'm sure good arguments will be, will be made from the leftist side, huh. Just kidding. Alright, see you guys next episode.